Great Debaters Contest 2016 registration is now open. Teachers or school administrations should register on www.greatdebaterscontest.com slash register. From the region of Chills, we are sure to fire you up today. Welcome to the Great Debaters Contest, Nyeri Region, Austin Yumbo. And Mariam Bishar. Today we discuss matters human rights and crime. Kiriti Secondary goes versus Muranga High School on whether the death penalty should be enforced on capital offenders. We'll let the debaters take the stage now. First proposer, you have three minutes. An eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's why I, Lynette Minor, Kiriti Secondary School, strongly propose the motion that death penalty should be enforced on capital offenders. Death penalty is taking away of a life. This is done by either hanging, lethal injection, electrocution, and shootouts. An example, hanging was done to Saddam Hussein in the year 2006 on 30th December. Shootout was done to Osama bin Laden. That is on 2nd May 2011. Capital offenders are people who commit crimes. These are heinous crimes against humanity. These include murder, rape, arson, treason, armed robbery. <clears throat> On to my first point, retribution. A just society requires a death penalty for the taking of a life. This was demonstrated by the district attorney of Oklahoma City in the US. In his case study, he stated that in 1991, a young mother was rendered helpless and made to watch as her baby was being executed. The same mother was then mutilated and killed. Should she forgive? Does the murderer require mercy? I don't think so. The killer should not be let to lie in some prison with three meals a day clean bedsheets, a cable TV, family visits, and endless appeals. For justice to prevail, some killers just need to die. Our justice system has no mercy for heinous crime, for heinous criminals. And that is why our beloved judges in the Supreme Court were, were for the reinstatement of this of these death penalty. That includes smoking Wanjala and beloved judge Njo Kindongo. Some people never learn. You will tell me to forgive a murderer, and then a prison breakage is done. The same murderer gets out, never to be caught again. You go back hunting the same people. Innocent lives will be lost. People who don't deserve to die will die. Let's all join hands and say that death penalty is a good solution. Thank you. We'll hear the opening statements of the opposition. You have three minutes. It is indeed my hope that everyone is having a nice time. My name is Dennis Mitambo from Moranga High School. Here on the opposing side, to oppose the motion that states that the death, the death penalty should be imposed on, criminal, on capital offenders. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like, first of all, to correct my counterparts in saying that capital offenses do not include rape and such. Capital offenses are uh, scenarios like first-degree murder, robbery with violence, espionage, such crimes with such magnitude is what we're talking about here. But for real, humanity makes human, and human Human is humane. But the moment we negate the fact that human is humane, then we lose what humans are. We become animals. I believe that nature has a room for everyone. That is why the, uh, biology teaches us that an ecosystem exists. That is, nature has a way of fulfilling itself. Nature has a way of complementing itself. If you're brought into this world, then you have a purpose. Life is precious. This is something that we all agree. Despite the fact that religion, despite the fact that religion is on our side, despite any other fact, the society itself accepts the value of life. 
a person contributes to the social aspects of life, the, the spiritual aspects of life, they are all in this. But the moment you take away that one life, then where are we going? Yes, I do agree that the constitution of Kenya is accepts the death penalty. But let us be real. Why are they hesitating? I give an example. The moment one hesitates in giving something, or the moment one asks, is it right, is it wrong? The answer probably is, it is wrong. That's why your mind asks you that question. Ladies and gentlemen, life is precious. The United Nations Human Rights Charter agrees to this. And if you consider the fact that the, hum the United Nations enacted these laws after the Second World War, meaning that they were very keen in establishing these laws, let's get our facts right. Our motion states that the death penalty should be imposed. By imposed, we mean that these laws should be implemented forcefully on every Kenyan, on every person. We are now in the, we are now in this century, and I don't think that democracy should be undermined. If it is actually to be uh, enacted into law, then I think that everyone should have a vote. If it is, if it is, if need be, let there be a referendum. Thank you. We'll hear rebuttals, beginning with the proposition. You have three minutes. Help, help me. That must have been the cry of that nine-year-old boy from Yahurur who was molested for about an hour by a man. As told by the Saturday Nation, April 13, 2013, that man was sentenced to life in prison. But are we really sure that that man won't escape prison? That's why I, Rosalyn Muthoni from Kereti Secondary School, strongly propose the motion that states that death penalty should be enforced to capital offenders. On to my first point. It prevents future crimes. Society has always used punishment to, to discourage would-be criminals from unlawful actions. Since it has the high interest in preventing these crimes, it should therefore use the strongest means available, and that is the death penalty. If, let's take, a, let's take murder. If every murder was to be executed, Others would think twice before killing for the fear of losing their lives. In 1973, Isaac Enlick employed a new kind of analysis that produced results showing that in every, for every inmate who was executed, seven lives were spared because they were, they were deterred from performing murder. If that doesn't convince you, then I don't know if this will. It helps save innocent lives. That three-year-old girl, that nine-year-old boy, that 90-year-old grandma who is walking with the aid of a cane, what do you think will happen to her if we let go free of that criminal, that rapist, that murderer? Judge Booker, I think, let's say you have a daughter. What, what, how would you feel if she keeps standing and tossing at night, screaming, Mommy, Mommy, I can see ghosts, the ghosts of that person who raped her? How would you feel? You would want to strangle that person. But since you don't want to be in the wrong, you will let justice take its course. By that, we eliminate those people who commit such heinous crimes, such as murder and rape. I rest my case. Opposition will hear your rebuttal. You have three minutes. I strongly believe in the saying of Mahatma Gandhi that says, an eye for an eye makes the world go blind. My name is Oscar Patrick from Moranga High School. Opposing the, propo opposing the motion that says, uh, the death penalty should be imposed on capital offenders. I stand by no religion. Religion is termed like a drug. Religion is like opium. Religion is what you take it to be. Most people tend to base the actions that they do on the actions of religion. 
They base the wrongs that they do, they base the evils that they do on the actions of religion, that religion actually relies on to that. But religion isn't actually what is written, because different people will term different things from the Bible, from the Quran, or from any other religious book in two different ways. Thus, religion should be taken as what a person's perspective is to be. Personally, I don't believe in killing people so as to make other people realize, or make other citizens realize that it is wrong to kill other people. The, uh, the, con the judicial system here contradicts itself. You can't kill a person just because he committed the um, treason, espionage, or the rest. To make the people actually believe that killing a person will actually lead is a wrong thing. Um, I think people have committed capital offenses. I know people have. We have people, for example, Ray Duck in the US of A in the state of California. People commit capital offenses. But I do believe that by them committing capital offenses, the life imprisonment uh, role should actually be given to them. Life imprisonment is actually hard, come to think of it. Living your life knowing that you're going to spend the rest of your life, for example, two life years imprisonment, Living your life knowing that you're going to spend the rest of your life behind bars is hard enough. Yes, I do accept. Some people are given the opportunity of giving a privilege due to their good behavior. But it is still hard. You have to work hard for the exact thing that you want to get, which are the privileges you're about to get. Mustafa Kadir, um, a researcher in the Amnesty International, stated that he doesn't believe that the... Um, the death penalty imposed on people actually helps other people. It is said that the death penalty has no special deterrent compared to other uh, penalties given. For example, life imprisonment. The UN Charter, um, the, uh, the security breach, uh, the security part of it, um, claims that there is no effect, there is no big effect given for the um, capital punishment compared to other punishments. Give the example of Canada. For the past 30 years, Canada abolished the system whereby they imposed death penalty to people. For the past 30 years, they, their, right to, their, um, pardon, their crime rates have reduced significantly from the past 30 years. But give the example of the US of A. The crime rates have increased since 2009 from 1,000 to a significant number of 3,512. Thank you. The Great Debaters Contest 2016 registration is now open. Teachers or school administrations should register on www.greatdebaterscontest.com slash register. Debaters Contest 2016 registration is now open. Teachers or school administrations should register on www.greatdebaterscontest.com slash register. Thank you, audience, for those questions. The proposition have been asked, how sure are they that enforcing the death penalty will reduce the occurrence of capital offenses such as murder? And the opposition have been asked that if we are to abide by religion, different religions have different uh, interpretations and penalties for different crimes. So which should we abide by? <laughs> Proposal number three, you have three minutes. First, I'd like to answer your question. I'm yet to hear of a person who is willing to die. Once one person has been executed for a crime like rape, no one will be there or will be willing to die for the same. And it was said, an Englishman said, that a wise man learns from his friend's experience. Do unto others what you would like to be done unto you. And that's why I, Patrick Shege, from Kerit Circle Dali, I'm here to advocate for death punishments. First, you can be talking of violating these persons' human rights by executing them. 
But let me ask you this. Hasn't this person first violated the rights of the other? And a case of example is Adi ba Palma, popularly known as Vibes Cartel. Vibes Cartel was, was sentenced for that five years in prison. For what? For killing his produ producer. After that, these fi that five years, he will be out walking freely in the streets of Kingston, Jamaica. This should actually be leaning a bell to our minds. This person will be out there. He will be treated to the last. How sure are we that the jail, that the jail will inform him? Let me ask you a question. We all have dogs in our homes. I presume in my area there is no home without a dog. And most of us with the dogs, we don't just let the dogs outside. Why? We are there, we want our dogs to stay indoors. To stay in their kennel, kennels. Why? We want them to be brave. We want them to be bitter. We, wa we want them to be bad as we term it. Then, after imprisoning this person, what do you expect him to come as? Answer me that question. Opposition, you have three minutes to respond to the audience. Crimes, sentences, correction, justice. What do these words mean in the society that we're living today? My name is Michael Kinyanjui from Moranga High School, and I say that all these words revolve around fairness. As a, uh, coming to recent terms, to recent events, a South African athlete by the name of Oscar Pristorius he supposedly is accused of having murdered his wife in cold blood. The mother-in-law demands that he be tried in court and face the death penalty. So that to her is what she would term as justice. What I see in this story, hate, present. Revenge, present. Inhumanity, present. Justice, Let me give you a short illustration. Take for example, a family. The father by the name of Tom. He has a daughter by the name of Angela. Tom is facing a financial crisis. He is unable to sustain his family. And therefore, in his wisdom and knowledge as a parent, he will do all that he can in, by all means to try and support his family. More, more, more uh, especially because Give, for example, Anne's birthday is coming up in a week. Angela, that is. So he goes out one day, a week before her birthday. He doesn't come back after two days. Four days later, he's still missing. Angela asks her mother, where is for dad? The mother says, in due time, he will come home. On the eve of her birthday, in the late night news, because her father is supposed to bring her a surprise, on those news, she will see that her father, who is apparently supposed to, uh, is apparently convicted of having committed a robbery with violence. He is supposed to face the death penalty. So on, her, on the eve of her birthday, just before it hits midnight, Angela is forced to see her father hanged by the neck until dead. What kind of image are you going to portray in the mind of this child? What is she going to see? Because in her perspective, her father was doing all that he could to provide for his family. To her, you are prosecuting a hero. Let's think about what the media will say, because in the judicial system, they will say, we have put a robber behind bars. We have put an end to the worms in society. So the media will make victory out of what they are doing. The caption will read, a murderer 
a thief finally put to his place. What will this make the child think about the judicial system that we have in Kenya? The next thing, by the laws of the constitution, when the, when, uh, the sole breadwinner of a family is uh, convicted of a crime or say sentenced to life imprisonment, the family is to be compensated. How can we say that a sum of money is supposed to take the place of a parent in society? Thank you. We'll have final submissions beginning with a proposition. You have a minute. Thank you very much. Your story was so capturing. But let me ask you a question. Angela will feel the pain to see his father being hanged. What about the child who saw his father being killed during the, during the first robbery? What of that child? Then, you have, you have talked of hatred after hanging. When I'm taking you to court, are we friends? We have already created hatred among us, ourselves. You know, we are trying to sound sympathetic to criminals more than to victims. What of this person during the post violence who saw his father being killed? Let me tell you, when you make a bed, be ready to lie on it. Opposition, you have a minute as well. I have a broken watch. By a broken watch, it's a clock actually. It stopped at 7 a.m. this morning. But if I bring it to you at 6.59 and ask you, what time is it? Then it clocks seven. Will it be wrong? No. My point is, life gives us more than a second chance. And by this, this clock is given a second chance to show that it's the correct time. Ladies and gentlemen, if I told you to support the, the terms of the death penalty, uh, 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 answer me. Jomo Kenyatta and Nelson Mandela were accused of treason, which is among the capital offenses. If they were actually killed, where would Kenya and where would the, would the larger Africa be right now? Ladies and gentlemen, let's get a better picture of this. Mitambo Dennis Moranga High School. Kiriti Secondary, Muranga High School. I'm going to address Muranga High School, but I must make a comment about Kiriti Secondary, especially Lynette. And I think you're just an awesome debater. Most debaters are fond of giving us dictionary definitions of terminologies, but I'm happy because you are able to give us definitions by examples. You're not just telling us this is what uh, this is, for example, you talked about Saddam Hussein, gave, gave, uh, as an example, you talked about the killing of Osama bin Laden, and I just love your emotional appeal. I also love your picturesque use of language. You know, you take us to the prison cells and talk about, you know, the white bed sheets, the telly that they are watching in the, in, in the cells, and you say that this is not fair to those people, to the victims or to the casualties, which was very commendable. The same applies to Rosaline, the same applies to Shege, but I think of the three, you are just awesome. To Muranga High School, very interesting debaters again, Dennis, Kimani, Michael. I just feel an urge to talk about Kimani first, a very mature debater. However, you did not cross-examine. Were you afraid of the issues they raised? I believe no, but your duty as a second debater is to cross-examine what has been raised. But again, very good issues. One, death penalty is less effective compared to other penalties, which is interesting. You give example of Canada, an example of United States of America, that Canada, there is no capital punishment, there is no death penalty, for example, but the crime rate has significantly reduced. But in the United States of America, they still enforce the death penalty. But we have seen the escalate, escalation rather of uh, criminal criminal activities. And looking at that comparison, you say then we should go the way of Canada, and that is we should not enforce death penalty. Very good use of examples. Um, I think it is uh, Dennis who talked about, uh, good debate actually, Dennis, but I just need to correct you on the issue of enforcing. When you talk about enforcing an issue, we don't really mean compelling the citizens. 
Enforcing has two possible meanings. One, uh, compelling, the other one, implementation. And I think the way the motion has been crafted, we are talking about implementation and not forcing. Nonetheless, very good debater. The aspect of humanity, very interesting. But the question someone might ask you is, are we going to sacrifice, for example, justice in the name of humanity? Maybe what you needed to do was to argue beyond any shadow of doubt that this is the best way to go. Michael, awesome. I mean, I can't describe you. I just had to put down my pen and listen to you because everything you said made sense, beginning with the example of Oscar Pistorius. Of course, you talked about killing the wife, but it's the girlfriend. You came to the allusion. I believe you're alluding to Francis Mbuga's book, Betrayal in the City, particularly to the words of Jasper, when he's talking about the absenteeism, so to speak, of justice in Kafira. But I also love the anecdote of Angela. What else did I want? I mean, the use of anecdote, story, illustrations, auger well with the listeners. I love the use of emotional appeal in that particular example. Costs, very important. And the aspect that you kill this father, but the child looks at him as a hero, not as a criminal. In other words, all of us are looking at the same thing, but we have different ways of perceiving that thing. Which is the best way? Reminds me of the blind people who are touching the elephant, and everybody said that he touched up, uh, different parts, and to him an elephant signifies the part that he touched. And in this particular case of the murder of this particular man, all of us respond depending with what we want or how we perceive of the thing. Michael is just an awesome debater, Kimani just an awesome, Dennis also a good speaker, and the analogy of the watch, it was also interesting. Awesome presentation. Kiriti Secondary, the judges awarded you 66%. Please give them a round of applause. Muranga High School, the judges saw it fit to award you 73%. You are our winners for the debate. Bravo to Muranga High School and of course a job well done to Kiriti Secondary School as well. That was a very entertaining and informative debate. Sure. We'd like to thank our, stu our studio audience here and our audience back at home for taking the time to watch us. Follow us on all our social media platforms and interact with us. I have been your host, Mariam Bishar. And I am Austin Yumbok. Catch you next time. The Great Debaters Contest 2016 registration is now open. Teachers or school administrations should register on www.greatdebaterscontest.com slash register.